Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, Outspoken Wheels on Wheels. My name is Joan and this week my video is going to be about returning to my hometown, the town that I grew up in, or at least that I spent my teenage years in. Uh, it's a little town. Some would call it kind of isolated because it's at the end of a road. So you drive off of a main highway and you go about 50 kilometers to the end of the road, which isn't really the end of the road either. It's the end of the, the main highway, the paved highway. Um, from there, you can go north for miles and miles and miles, um, hundreds of miles into the bush. Um, and it's really beautiful up there. And I really want to go up there too while I'm here, but I don't have good enough tires to travel on those roads. And they're logging roads and require don't require but it's probably a good idea to go up them with a radio and I don't have a radio so so I guess I'm not going that's disappointing because it there's there's just zillions of forestry wreck sites that I could go camping at beside creeks and rivers and lakes um, and I haven't when I was growing up here I didn't spend hardly any time up there so I'm not super familiar with it I just think it would be really um, a neat area to explore. But anyways, I'm here in town um, right now just to uh, visit with some family that's still here and also because I need a pair of moccasins. When I was growing up I had a pair of moccasins that were built by one of the women in this town and uh, I've been wearing moccasins off and on throughout my life ever since then. Now my feet are so badly swollen all the time that I pretty much can only wear moccasins and so I wear them out. So I'm here to hopefully meet with a woman who makes them and get her to build me one or two pairs. Um, we'll see how that goes. But for right now I'm staying at a campground at the end of this big lake that uh, that the town is on. I don't know why I'm not telling you the name. I don't know. I just feel safer not telling you the name. Anyways, you can probably figure it out if you want to. Um, anyways, it's on the end of a really big lake. And this campground that I'm staying in, it's about 10 kilometers on the out of town on the lake. And I'll take you down there and show you that in a while. But uh, the campground here is great. I used to come here and swim sometimes when I was a kid. But uh, the, the campsites the individual campsites are so private. I love going to a campground where you can't really see the people that you're camping around. And this one is so, um, there's so many trees and stuff that you can't really, you can't really see anybody. So I'm enjoying it. I've got family coming out for a potluck dinner tonight and uh, that's it for now. Well, I'm just leaving the park that I stayed at for the last two nights. I'm still camping there. I'm just heading into town. I haven't been into town since I arrived in the area and I'm going in today and I'm gonna have a look around at some of my old stomping grounds. So. Stay tuned. So this is just coming into town and I had to voice over this because I had a near miss with a bike. You'll see that coming up here and there was a lot of bad words so I couldn't use that audio. Um, anyways, this is just uh, the bridge that we just crossed is over the Nikosli River and this is coming up through the reserve that's that you have to go through on the way into town. And I think coming up here, there's a guy on the bike and he's going the wrong way. Like bikers are supposed to be on the other side going with the traffic. And look at him, he, holy cow. <laughs> I guess you don't really see it on there, but he uh, turned to look back at the traffic that was coming from behind, like towards me. And as he turned, his whole bike turned towards in front of my van. He caught himself and steered back off the road, which is really great because I felt like I was going to hit him if he didn't um, fix that. But anyways, here we're almost through the reserve and then I'll pick
pick it up again as we come uh, more into the main part of town. So the first place we come to is called the Kitten Cam. It says Kings on there. But at the time that I lived here, it was known as the Kitten Cam. And it was the place I discovered fries and gravy. You Americans might not know what that is, but it's French fries and gravy on top. And it's delicious. This is the town skating rink. We used to do public skating here on Friday nights. It's had some add-ons. The part in the front wasn't there before. Shundu motor in. Whoops. Shut. Take two. <laughs> Shundu motor in. This is where I used to work when I was a kid, right out of high school. I was the bookkeeper and sometimes the chambermaid. And this is where I attended school. I moved there in grade six and attended this school right up till grade 12. It was called Fort St. James Elementary Junior Secondary School. Quite a mouthful, huh? But uh, it was a small town, and that was what it was called. Um, there's been a lot of add-ons. School looks a lot more modern than it did when I was attending it. I'll see if I can find an older photo of it to attach to the video. This is Our Lady of Good Hope. When I was growing up, I thought it was the oldest Catholic church or church in BC. Turns out there's two older ones that they have now more recently discovered, so it's the third oldest church in BC. Here's me and my brother and sister having breakfast at the historic park. Yes, Fort St. James is a old Hudson Bay post. And there is a historic park there that you can tour. Um, it's quite a beautiful property. I have some pictures of this when before it was actually a park because when we moved to Fort St. James in 1972, the buildings were there, but it was not a historic park. These three photos are ones that my dad took back in the 70s before it was a historic park. That's what it looked like um, when we first moved to Fort St. James. Another part of the history of Fort St. James is the petroglyphs that you can go look at by boat a few kilometers up the lake. This building housed the novelty shop way back in the 70s when I lived here. I used to come here and buy two semi-sweet, sorry about the car, buy two semi-sweet chocolate bars for 25 cents each. My whole allowance was 50 cents and I would make it last the week. Coming up here. The house with the charcoal car, the blue house. That was my mom and dad's house. This is what it looked like when they first purchased it, and they had purchased it uh, just after I moved out to go to college. This is the first house I lived in when I moved to Fort St. James. It wasn't in this location and it didn't have a basement. On, oh, it did have a basement, but not that high. It was actually hauled into town from where it was on the ranger station. We used to live on the ranger station and I'll explain more about that in a bit. This is what it looked like when we lived in it. And that's the second house we lived in. It was also hauled into town from the ranger station. Didn't look like that, not nearly as nice as that when we lived in it. This is closer to what it looked like. This is the front of the house. There was actually a door beside that living room window. Um, they've taken that out and added a patio off to the side there that we never had. This is what it looked like when we lived in it back in the 70s. And this is our first and second house before they were moved into town. So what I meant by the ranger station is this. And I'm sorry I can't give you any better video because they've got it all gated off now. Before, there was no fence around it or anything, and you could just drive down that hill to the houses that were 
on the, I don't know, what is this, the two to three acre park, um, two to three acre parcel of property. Um, it had our two, the, the first house and the second house that we lived in. And then just where I just showed you was where the third house was. And it also got moved into town. At the bottom of that hill is where all the forestry buildings were. Um, it was the BC Forest Service back then, I think. And my dad was a forest ranger. And now you can see the big building off to the side there that was never there. It's very, um, I think this must be like a regional office now for the forestry. And that's what it looks like now. Before it was like a park. It was like we lived in the middle of a park. I forgot to mention that this little hill doesn't look like much. But this little hill, I used to have to drive up to get to school when I, when I was allowed to drive the car to school. Um, I used to have to drive up this hill. So in the winter, you'd get a run at it as much as you could and drive up as quick as you could and hope that nobody was coming so that you didn't have to top it, stop at the top here at the road. Often I felt like I was the best driver in the world because I had to back all the way down this driveway. Doesn't look like much and then get another run at it if I either had to stop at the top or spun out halfway up. So anyways, that's my, uh, <laughs> my winter experience on this driveway. all for this week. I uh, hope you enjoyed my little trip down uh, my memory lane. I thought I'd leave you with a few photos and video of how beautiful the lake is where I grew up. <laughs>